friends. Welcome to Awaken the Heart. Here's Jennifer Martin, your host, and my ministry is called Contagious Love International, along with my husband, Monday Martin, and you can find out more about us at contagiousloveintl.com for events. Our blog is there, miracle testimonies, uh, videos, and also uh, how you can partner with us one time or monthly if the Lord puts that on your heart feel free to jump on there there's a donate link where you can join up with us through PayPal securely and we would appreciate it if God puts that on your heart of anything you guys can do to join up with Contagious Love International welcome everyone jumping on live I feel the presence of the Lord I am so excited today I feel the joy of the Lord coming in for this word that he's dropping in my heart I believe it's going to impact you and change your life and just keep you going, keep filling you up with all that is in Him, that the mystery of the fullness in Him would invade your life today. So this is going to be short today, and uh, we are going to go ahead and jump right in. So let's pray, and let's invite the presence of the Lord, and let's jump right into the Word of God. So I feel this word being deposited in me, and I know that God has had me chewing on this for you guys. Because I want you guys to receive the fullness of what is your inheritance. And I want you guys to receive what, everything that is yours in Christ, and I want you to know that it's yours. And God has called me to be a voice. And I feel this right now prophetically, because the Lord is literally bringing it up in my spirit, because He's talking to me too. You know how he does that. The Spirit comes and he says, don't worry about what you're going to say in the hour for the Holy Spirit will give you what he wants you to say. And I feel this in this time that I am a voice that God has called for to bring the light of Christ, to bring the truth of his heart, to awaken the heart to a church, to awaken the heart to a people that have not known the depths of his love and his grace and his mercy and the authority of what you carry in Christ. And God has put a gift upon me as he has given gifts to men. And it talks about that, that Christ ascended and that he had gave gifts unto men. And the measure of the grace that has been given to me, guys, has been a gift of faith. And the faith that comes upon me that has been deposited upon me is going to come through every single one of these broadcasts. You've probably sensed it in the past. And if you need faith in your life and you need to be stirred up in the gift of God that's on you, you need to jump on here every week. And if you can't get on live, you need to get on the replays and receive from the Lord because this is not Jennifer Martin and what Jennifer Martin has stirred up. For God is the one that called me into his glorious light and to minister to the church. So I want you just to receive from the Spirit of God today. Receive a fresh wind today and receive the fullness of Him that fills all in all. He's going to fill you today. You are full of Him already. But He's going to cause that fullness to manifest as revelation meat inside of you. That it will cause your whole mind, soul, body, and heart to join together in the divine dance of unity, of the joy, peace, and love, and the Holy Ghost, which is the kingdom of God. And God has designed from the beginning of time for us to come into this place of our inheritance of the fullness of being one in Christ. Father, I thank you for this word today. Lord, let your anointing come upon each one that is, that is on this broadcast. Lord, let your presence just touch them right now, Father. Right now, right now, right now. Lord, let the shaking in the Spirit begin right now. Shake everything, Lord, off of them that has been exalted up against the true knowledge of God. Father, I pray you shake off every false doctrine or false ideology or, or lies that the enemy has tried to bring to bring in a false God concept, Lord, right now. I ask you to release the shaking in the spirit. 
Lord, that is not painful, but gracious and full of mercy and love and truth. Shaking in the spirit, Lord, that you break every chain, Father, that has tried to cast your people down into a pit of despair, loneliness, depression, the lies, the pit of lies that burst from hell itself, from the father of lies. Lord, break it today on this session. Because we guys are going to step into everything that God has for us. There is nothing missing. There is nothing broken. We have the fullness of God. There's going to be such an impartation on this session. I feel it in my spirit, even for me, that we are together, our union in Christ. We are going to receive the fullness of him. We are going to understand what it is to actually walk in Christ. And it's not going to come through all of my nice words, but it's going to come through impartation in the Holy Spirit by revelation through Jesus himself. So let's start in Ephesians 1. Father, I thank you for the anointing on this word. I ask that it would go forth, Lord, and cut, Lord, right now like the sword of the Spirit, dividing, Lord, right now the flesh from the Spirit, Lord, and causing the Spirit of God to manifest and bring fruit, Lord, bring fruit, Lord, worthy unto you. Bring the fruit, Lord, due unto your name, that Jesus be exalted, Father, in our lives and in our hearts. And that the unity with the truth, Lord, manifest in us. Manifest in us, Lord, your truth. Manifest it, God. For you are the one that causes truth, Lord, to come forth. You are the one, God, that touches our inner man and causes our spirit to wake up to the truth of who you are. That faith, Lord God would manifest in our spirits, Lord, in such a way that it would cause your glory to manifest all around us, Father. According to Hebrews 11, now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Oh, Lord, that that faith, God, that is already inside of our spirit because our, your Holy Spirit is in us. And that faith, Lord, I pray right now that you would cause it to begin to flow out of our bellies to bring forth manifestation of the substance of heaven right now. Who? Ephesians 1, guys. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I am here to cut down the lie of the enemy that tells you that you have not already been prepared from the foundations of the world with Christ, with all spiritual blessings, with everything that you need inside of you right now. Because you are in Christ, you have been birthed into every spiritual blessing. I cut down the lie of the enemy that tells you that you have to reach and obtain something, okay? That you have to reach and obtain something in the Spirit. That you have to pray enough or fast enough or, or grab hold of God's robe enough to get the blessings of God. Because Scripture tells us right here, Paul tells us that we've already been blessed, guys, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And because we are in Christ, we have been made new, a new creation. If you have received Jesus and you are in Christ, I am telling you that right now, whether you feel like it or not, every spiritual blessing is inside of you. You've got to grab onto what's already been yours. So, so God cannot give you something that he's already given you. How crazy would it be for our child to come and ask us, say that we gave them something that they needed? A book that they had been asking for. And it, how crazy would it be for my child to keep coming to me and asking me for the same book? For my reply would be, but son, but daughter, I have already given you that book. Why do you keep asking me? I cannot give you again what has already been given to you. And yet we see the church asking and asking and asking God for something that he's already given to us. What we need to do is grab on to that inheritance that's already ours and say, this is mine. The devil can't steal it. The devil can't take it from me. But you see, the enemy is trying to steal every spiritual blessing from you right now because he wants to make you believe that you don't have it. And the Holy Ghost, guys, has been given to us 
He said, if your father being evil can give good, if, if a father being evil can give good gifts unto his child, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? We have been given the Holy Spirit if we have asked for Him. I've asked for Him. If you haven't asked for Him, ask for the Holy Spirit. Oh, He's the best friend you'll ever have. He is the one that leads you and guides you into all truth. He is the one that makes you understand and gives you the revelation of Christ. See, Paul received the revelation of Jesus, guys, not by man's words, not by, not by any person. He literally went into Arabia and, and received the revelation of Jesus with him and the Lord. Guys, all scripture has been given us to us by the Holy Spirit. Everything that Paul wrote in these epistles, guys, was from the mouth of Jesus himself. Now we need to read it through that understanding and that lens that this wasn't just Paul's great ideas and great teachings, but it was literally the revelation of Jesus talking to Paul so that the church coming after him would understand what has now been given us to us in the new creation reality. The Gospels are wonderful. They teach us the ministry of Jesus. But Jesus wanted us to learn who he is there and believe on him from the Gospels. The Gospels were written to show us who Jesus is, what he does, his power, and what he created for us all the way up until the cross. It taught us the life of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus, the workings of Jesus, the words of Jesus, parables of Jesus, to all bring us to what? A place to understand who Jesus is so that we would believe on him and receive him and that we would receive eternal life. This is what the Gospels are for. The Gospels are to bring the lost into Christ, to know Him and to believe on Him. But once we've believed on Jesus, now I love the Gospels. I'm staying in the Gospels, but I'll tell you something. If you haven't eaten of the epistles and really digested them, you will not read the Gospels through the right lens. We have to see the Gospels correctly through what has now been created through the cross. Now we have been brought back through redemption of the cross into the fullness of Christ, into every spiritual blessing. We are not those from before. We are those that have been made new. We are the first fruit generation of a Holy Ghost filled people. We've got to know it. We've got to read the epistles and we've got to get this. All spiritual blessings have been given to us in heavenly places in Christ according as he hath chosen us in him. See, he already chose you. Before the foundation of the world, there it is. He has chosen me, say chosen me, in him. Before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. Now get this. According to the good pleasure of his will. It's the good pleasure of his will, guys, that he adopted us as children and brought him into himself through Jesus. This is good pleasure. Good pleasure. Just think about that. He had good pleasure to bring us to him. To the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Oh, guys, read Ephesians. I've been reading Ephesians every day for a week. I'm literally eating this until I get it. I should have it memorized soon. This is so good. We are accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Wherein he hath abounded toward us. Say abounded. What did he abound toward us? In all wisdom and prudence. Having made known to us the mystery of his will. According to his good pleasure which he has purposed in himself. Now, what's the mystery of his will, guys? What is the mystery? What is the mystery? What is the mystery? Verse 10, Ephesians 1, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, 
he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Did you hear that? That he might gather together in one all things. Guys, that's everything. Every single thing. All things. There's a union in the earth. There's a union in the spirit. There's a union of inheritance that God has given us. And we have union with things even of nature. When we start understanding this revelation of the authority of who we are, our real position in Christ, and we actually believe it, it's not something we're trying to convince ourselves of, but we believe it in our heart and our spirit. When we really get this, we're going to actually see nature, you know, bow down to us. By that I mean Jesus calmed the storms. We can see storms dissipate by our authority. We can see nature move with our words. There's a union in the glory of Jesus Christ who is in us. There is a place that we become so grounded in Him that even all things around us begin to be gathered into one. For this is the mystery of the will of God. There is so much union, guys, in the earth. Oh man, I feel this in the spirit right now. There's so much union with us and all of creation. I know it. I know it to be true. I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my spirit. I've sensed it and I've seen it as I've seen God by the power of the voice of God inside of me come forth and I've seen storms stop. I've seen clouds move away just because I wanted sun. I've literally seen it through grace. And I'd say, God, I'd say, I love the clouds. I love you, clouds. I bless you. But I need you to make a hole in the sky because I want sun today. This is when I was at the pool and it was cloudy. And I just said, hey, I believe God. I just believe him. Maybe I sound silly. Maybe I sound crazy. But I just believe that God wants to give me all things and all good things. And that he, if I want to have son, it's his good pleasure to give it to me. And guys, I'm not kidding. Within 20 minutes, an entire the entire sky was clouded. It was supposed to be 100% cloudy every hour of the day. And I am not kidding. Like a blanket. Within 20 minutes... There was a hole of complete blue skies. I'm not talking about just a little bit of space. I'm talking about every single cloud moved out of the way. And the entire sky opened up with blue. And I told Mundy about it. And I said, Mundy, I just asked 20 minutes ago. I asked the clouds. I asked the Lord to move the clouds. And I said, clouds, I love you, but I need you to move. I need some sun. And I said, thank you, God, for moving the clouds and the angels of the Lord that moved the clouds out of the way. And, guys, I was just doing it for fun. I didn't know if it was really going to happen, but I did believe that it could, you know, because I have faith like a, like a little girl, like a little child. And I was shocked at how the Lord pushed every single cloud. And I'm talking about a blanket of clouds. There was not one hole, not one space for sun to peep through. And it was complete blue, like a blanket. And I had sun for the rest of the day that I was at the pool. And I said, Lord, that wasn't necessary, but it's just it's just your good pleasure. To, to, it's just your good pleasure, and you want to pour out good on us, you know? He just loves us, and he wants us to, to be blessed. We have every spiritual blessing. This is the mystery of the fullness of Christ. There, there's such a union, I believe, that as we come into peace with Jesus we allow the kingdom of heaven to really reign inside of us and the joy peace of the Holy Ghost you know we don't allow sin to to uh, take over us because we have no desire for sin like the law of sin is literally dead it's literally dead when you when you have the law of liberty in Christ Jesus in you and the Holy Ghost has has poured in you and you've you've been set free from the law of sin and death there is no desire for it you don't care for it you don't want you don't want to run after it nothing you just have such a union in your body with your spirit and, and your body. 
our bodies can have this fullness too. As we have the fullness in our spirit through Christ, every spiritual blessing in Christ, in our spirit. When our spirit's receiving this, and we receive the joy and the peace of the Holy Ghost in our spirit, and a lot of times we, we break apart, you know, well, that's my spirit, man, but in my flesh, you know, I fight and I war and I'm dealing with these things in the flesh. But I'm here to tell you that there is a union between the body and the spirit. If you will allow the full working of Jesus by faith and revelation knowledge of who he is already inside of you, that he made peace between he made peace between our flesh and our spirit. Our flesh has to submit to our spirit. And our flesh will go where our spirit wants it to go. Because Jesus Christ has triumphed over all things openly. And now our body, guys, should be free of sin, the power of sin, the power of sickness. It's free from it now. The flesh has to come into union with Christ. It has to come into its inheritance. It has to come into the fullness of of Christ. It must. Because I've decided that my body and my spirit are going to rule together in peace. That my body has to submit to the Spirit of God and the truth of who He is. Okay, let's keep going. This is the mystery of His will. According to His good pleasure which He has purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times He might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Ephesians 1.11 In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. There it is. Paul said we've already obtained, past tense, there's an ed on that word, in whom we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. Come on. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. If you have believed on Jesus Christ, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. You've been sealed in your forehead with the Holy Spirit of promise. You are marked by God. You belong to Him. And now nothing will separate you from the love of Christ. Nothing. Not one thing can separate you anymore. Because you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It tells me right here in Ephesians 1.13. There it is. Go ahead and stamp that scripture all over that spirit of unbelief that tries to tell you you're not saved or God's not pleased with you or all these other lying things that the enemy tries to do. This is why we got to get the word of Christ in us, the word of God in us. We have got to know it so that when the enemy tries to lie, it can't even get any place in us. It can't even find a place to latch that lie on. Because if, if there's places in us where the enemy can latch on to, because we haven't been strengthened yet by the word of truth and we haven't been cleansed yet by the word of truth. See, the enemy can try to find places, memories, past mistakes, familiar spirits, all these things. He can try to find these things and latch on to them and cause attack on your life. You know, we wonder why the enemy attacks us or we feel like the enemy has some kind of power or it's just warfare and all these things. But I'm here to tell you that when you get the revelation of Jesus Christ in you, and the anointing of the Holy Ghost in you, and you get the word of truth in you, I am here to tell you that the devil will find no place in you ever again. That he will find no place to attack you with temptations or sickness or anything. Just like Jesus, Jesus said, he's found no place in me. And if Christ is in us, and he is, because we've believed on him, we've become sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Therefore, Christ being in me, the enemy can find no place in Christ. Therefore, he can find no place in me. It is a lie to believe any other thing. I do not care. I do not care what is being preached by anyone else. It is a lie 
of the devil to believe that we are in some lower state or on some equal power with the devil and that we have to fight and battle and warfare like crazy people to get free from things or to get free from a situation. In fact, in Psalms 2, it says, He that sits in the heavens shall laugh. He shall have him in derision. Now, when we believe, see, I just believe the word of God. I, I just have decided to believe the word of God. I literally take it and I believe it. So if my God sits in the heavens and laughs over the enemy that tries to attack me or do anything against me, then therefore I can just go ahead and sit here and laugh too because any attempt of the enemy will always fall fruitless and void. He will never find place. He will never get victory. He will never succeed because I know the truth. He can't win. We've got to come to this place where we understand it. And I'm telling you, I used to get battled over things by the enemy. And, and, and the struggling was real, you know. And I would battle and battle and battle. And I'll tell you why. It's because I did not understand who I was in Christ. And I did not understand that what he was doing was a lie. And trying to get me to, to believe an illusion that I, was, that I was even in warfare. Like the illusion was that I was even being attacked. He had me in this illusion that, like, yeah, I've got you. There's an open door somewhere. I'm attacking you. And I'm telling you that it's a lie of the devil. I went to my spiritual mother and father and told them what was going on. And they said, this is an illusion. You've got to know who you are and realize the enemy is scared. And he's just trying to create tactics to bring you lower than where you are. So hear me now. You don't have to go down lower to the enemy and fight him. Because you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. He cannot come up to where you are and attack you. In fact, he has no legal right anymore to reach you. And the only reason people think they're in warfare is because they think they are. Listen, or it feels like warfare because they think it is. Now, I know there's circumstances and situations that is hard to walk through. But is that warfare? I don't think so. I think it's just waiting for the glory of God to manifest on you. And to see the fullness of Christ come into the situation. I don't think it's the enemy getting right to come and cause disaster in your life. Okay? Unless somebody's opened a door to sin and they're walking in sin and they haven't repented of that, then yes, the enemy can use that sin because the law of sin brings death. The wages of sin is death. And the enemy can legally have a right if people are walking in sin to come and create, um, you know, attacks and things. So that's why we have to allow Christ in us, the hope of glory, to work and kill that law of sin, because he already did on the cross. And we have to realize it, we have to yield to the Holy Ghost, and we have to walk now in newness of life and the truth of God. And I'm telling you, when you do that, the enemy can have no place. The enemy can have no place. I don't know who this is for, but this is for somebody today. We preached on this last week about Ephesians 6. It, Paul said stand. He used the word stand four different times. He never used the word scream, yell, swing your sword, and punch the devil. Okay? Paul said stand, 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 stand. And I'm telling you, when the enemy sees you standing instead of swinging and fighting because he's trying to wear you out... He's like, look at him. I got him swinging and fighting. They don't even realize that they're like more powerful than me. <laughs> you know, and he's like laughing. He thinks it's so funny when he has us just throwing our little pity parties in warfare. And we're screaming and we're fighting and we're throwing all kinds of things at the devil. And we're like throwing scripture in the air. And we're like spending so much time fighting, you know. And I'm telling you right now that it is a waste of time. Because if you understand who you are, <laughs> you already know the enemy can't touch you. So you're just like this. You're like, whatever. Whatever. You can't take my salvation. You can't take who I am in Christ. You can't change my authority and my position. So go ahead and throw your little fit. Because I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to quit. And I can't be moved. That's what the scripture says. And when you grab that in your heart and your spirit, I'm telling you, that same cycle that's been coming around, that's been defeating you time after time after time, that lying devil, I am telling you right now, 
he will give up and he will move on because he will realize that you can't be moved. And the whole thing that he's trying to do is to get you to be moved off of your mountain. He's trying to move you off the rock of Christ. He's trying to move you off your stance of faith. Why? So that if he can get us to cower and bow down and become weak and begin to doubt in our faith, then he gets us. You see, he's trying to bait people. He's trying to bait people, you know, trying to pull them off of who they already are in the authority. This is why we need to preach the authority of Jesus. This is why we need to preach it. We should not be preaching to people any other gospel but the gospel of truth. We should not be doing it. If it does not line up with scripture, it should not be being preached. I don't care what people are saying. I look at my Bible and I say, does that line up? Does that line up with what God has revealed to us in his words? Because it says every single scripture is breathed by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So we have to ask ourselves, is what being preached really the truth? Come on, y'all. This is what I'm here for. If you're listening to any preaching that is not preaching the truth of the authority of Christ and Christ in you and the inheritance that we've already received and they're preaching struggling, striving, obtaining warfare, I'm telling you right now that that is not the truth. Whew. Paul said stand four different times, Ephesians 6. Stand with what? Your helmet of salvation. Stand, stand, stand. Belt of truth, sword of the spirit, shield of faith, shoes of peace, breastplate of righteousness. He said stand. He said that your shield of faith would quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Therefore, if my shield of faith will quench every fiery dart of the wicked one, then I don't need to sink, swing my sword, honey. Because my shield of faith is working. He can't stop you when you've got faith. Come on. In the word of God and what he said. And you don't even have to scream the word of God at God. And you don't have to sit there and do that either because you know it in your spirit. It's already been rooted and grounded. And because it's rooted and grounded in you, you're walking in it. Now, maybe you're not at that place yet. Maybe you need to grow in faith and that's okay. Maybe you're not at that place yet. That's why we need the word of God. Let's keep reading. Verse 14. We'll back up, 13. After, you've been, after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Look at that. You are the purchased possession of God and you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit until that day of complete redemption and we receive our full inheritance come on our glorified bodies who verse 15 wherefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Guys, if we have this right here, right here, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. This is what the Lord is releasing on us right now because it's in us, it's in our spirit already. We have the Holy Spirit of promise. He is the spirit of wisdom. He will lead us and guide us into all truth. Therefore, we can believe and know that he will reveal to us Jesus. He will reveal the knowledge of him in us. So that, verse 18, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. Oh, I pray that this hits you in your spirit today. I pray that the revelation of Jesus already in you begins to manifest His glory in you and brings you into the fullness of understanding of who you already are. 
what you already have and what you already walk in. The problem is, it's so hard for us to receive what's already been given to us because we believe that somewhere in, somewhere in it we have to put our hand in it and we have to work it, you know, and we have to work it somehow. We have to have some kind of part in it and we want to take ownership of it, you know. We want to take ownership of, of the work in us, like we did this and we did that. We want to be able to say we did something somewhere. But I've got good news for you. You can just lean into Jesus and trust in him and let the finished work that he has already completed and the fullness of your inheritance just begin to manifest out of your belly, out of your spirit. Let it flow, rivers of living water right now. Begin to stand on the truth of who you are in the face of everything as you walk through your life in the face of the enemy. But more so than that, in the face of God. That God would see you walking in faith and standing on His Word. His child that brings so much pleasure to Him already. Believing Him as He looks upon us and He looks into our heart. And, we're, and he sees faith, and he sees trust, he sees hope, and he sees us believing on him. This brings him so much pleasure. Okay. So our understanding needs to be enlightened to who we already are in the knowledge of Christ. What Christ has done. We're going to go over this till we get this. This is the mystery of the fullness right here. That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above. Come on now, say far above. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Therefore, if Jesus Christ is seated in heavenly places, and I am also seated with him, and he is far above all Prince about far above, not just above, far above <laughs> all principality, power, and dominion, and every name that is named. Come on. We have to have the right revelation of who's got the power here. Okay. Jesus is the one that has the power. No enemy can withstand his glory upon us. Because Jesus is in us. Therefore, as the glory is manifesting in us, nothing can stand before him. It must bow its knee. Every tongue will confess, every knee will bow to Jesus Christ. He is above every name that can be named. Every sickness must bow. Every lying devil must bow. Okay? You just go ahead and tell that devil to go ahead and bow to Jesus Christ in your belly. Go ahead. Go ahead and rise your face up and stand up straight. Go ahead. Go ahead and realize Jesus Christ in you has all dominion. You cannot be touched. You cannot be moved. The enemy cannot touch you. I am telling you, he cannot touch you. Legally, he can't touch you. He might be trying to lie to your mind. He might be trying to get you in some kind of whirlwind of oppression and depression. He might be trying all kinds of things, but he can't touch you. You get to decide how you're going to believe and how you're going to stand. And I'm telling you, as you stand on the Word of God, you are going to see that little demon tuck his tail and run away because his efforts are fruitless against you 
and he'll try to go find someone else whom he might devour. The Bible says that the enemy is going around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He is not allowed to devour you. In fact, even people that the enemy tried to take out early, like he, he illegally attacked them and, and killed them, Jesus sent them back. Come on, people. Who has the ultimate authority around here? Jesus Christ. Even when the enemy tried to put things on people, illegally, illegally tried to attack people and took them out early. And Jesus Christ would tell them, your time's not yet. Go back. The enemy doesn't have the final say. Jesus Christ does. And Jesus Christ is your brother. He is your Lord. He is your Savior. And you can trust him that he has the power in you and on you and on your life. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Come on. Eternal authority Jesus Christ has right now and forever. This is truth. This is what it is. We need to get, let this truth rise up in us to where we feel that power of God and His authority and in His name in us. That we will not be moved. We will not be swayed. We will not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. We will stand upon the rock of Christ. And when the storms come and when the winds come and when the waves crash upon that house built on that rock, it will not fall. For it was founded upon a rock. You cannot fail. Verse 22. And he has put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Come on. He's put all things under his feet. Well, guys, is it true or is it not? Is this true or is it not? Because if it's true, when Paul tells us through the revelation of the Spirit of God that all things have been put under the feet of Jesus, what does that mean to us if that is true. Come on. And he gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Which is his body. The fullness of him. Did you just hear that? It says. The church which is his body, the fullness of him. We are the fullness of Christ. We are the body together, gathered together in one. We are walking in this earth as the fullness of Christ. That is the truth. That is who we are. If it's not manifesting in the body, it's because they don't believe it. But it is the truth. It is the foundational truth that the body of Christ is the fullness of him that fills all in all. This is the mystery of the fullness. This authority, this dominion, this fullness being in the body of believers that walk in the earth. We have dominion in this earth. We don't have to struggle and fight in warfare. We take authority by being the authoritative power. We are being the authority. What we say goes because we are so full of Holy Ghost and so full of Jesus that the words that are coming out of our mouth are the words of God speaking them to our spirit. What we know we hear him. 
we know we follow His voice. We're not confused. We're not questioning. We're not tossed to and fro. We know we hear the Lord. We know that we feel Him in our spirit. We know that we release things by the Spirit of God into the atmosphere. And we know that when we say it, we know those things that we say are going to happen because we know that we're praying according to His will, not according to our own will, not according to what Jennifer Martin wants, for Jennifer Martin is dead. I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but now I live the, the Christ that lives in me. I live the life of Christ in me. It's not Jennifer Martin living anymore. It's the will of God living through me. Let it be said of us that we yield to the Holy Ghost in us and yield to the will of God. That we would pray forth His will. Because guys, when we read the Bible, when we read the Bible, I see prophets and leaders all throughout the Old Testament that spoke the very word of God. They spoke the very will of God. They did not speak their own will. They did not speak their own way. They did not offer up their own prayers. They did not offer up personal prayers of, of breakthroughs that they needed. Now, I'm not saying God doesn't want to give us breakthroughs, but I'm talking about the heart right now. I'm talking about the heart. I saw a people so broken and so yielded that they were afraid to miss one step of what the voice of God had told them. The prophets who would prophesy never out of their own, never out of their own, never out of their own way, never out of their own will, not what they wanted to see in the earth. In fact, you've got Jeremiah that would cry and say, oh God, you know, these words are so hard. You've got prophets that were so yielded to the Lord that what they had to tell Israel was not an easy thing. But they were so yielded to the will of God that when the voice of God came to them and when the word of the Lord came unto them, saying, they would always say, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. It was always about them listening to him, receiving his will for the people and releasing that word to God's children. And it was always a collective word, you know, for the entire nation to draw them back to the Lord, to get them out of darkness and out of sin, which was destroying their lives because God is a good God and He loves His people. And I pray that in this day, that the leaders out there, the leaders, the pastors, and the prophets, and the teachers, that, that we would all be so yielded to the voice of God that what comes out of our mouth is, is His will and not ours. And everyone, every sheep, every sheep that is of His pasture, that you would yield yourself to the will of God not to the will of you who wants to live a certain life and all your requests that go up to him is based on your own desires and your own will. What if we get consumed with the kingdom of heaven and we have no will anymore except that of him that sent us? Oh, I feel the glory all over me right now. Where is the fear of God? Why is God not put higher than everything else, including our own lives? Why have we so exalted our personal selves up before the throne of God, exalting and pushing our will upon an eternal God? Using God as, as the supplier of needs. This ought not to be. Our will and our lives should be yielded to the God of the universe. Who created us and gave us life. And every day may we bow our knees before him and say like Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You see, Jesus taught us how to pray. He taught us how to pray. I think maybe we've gotten off a little bit on our teachings. I think we should be praying the will of God and not the will of our lives. And I believe as we truly yield to the voice of the Lord and hear Him and pray those things that Holy Spirit wants us to pray, I will not pray unless led by the anointing. I will not do it. I will not pray things out of my will to push upon the Lord. For I trust Him that His will will be done. For I have asked for Him to let His will be done on the earth. And not my will. But what His will for my life is to manifest in and through me. I have given over every desire to Him. Every want. Every idea every thought. I will not force it. I will not push it. I will not do it. I will not control God. But let us yield to Him. Where is the fear of God? Where is the fear of God? Where is the fear of God? The fear of the Lord that is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, that people would fear Him. And truly, upon their hearts, place Jesus Christ on the throne. And truly, that we would yield our lives and bow our knees before the living Christ, who deserves and is worthy, so worthy of our lives for all that He's done. How can we offer up anything else? How can we want anything but Him? And how can we want anything but what He wants? How can we want anything but what He wants? When He's given us life, He's given us eternity. He's given us everything. And I just feel the heart of the Lord drawing His people to Him. I feel the heart of the Lord Because He is our God. And He is a spirit. We must yield to the will of the Father. And believe on Jesus. Let's stop trying to exalt ourselves up above this revelation that Jesus Christ is everything. That He is the mystery of the fullness of God. That loving God, loving Him, knowing the love of Christ, this is the fullness of God. There is no greater place. There is no greater breakthrough. There is no greater promotion. There is no greater increase than what has already been given to us through the love of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Nothing greater. Nothing greater. But we must break ourselves and yield ourselves to Him. We must do it. We must say, not my will, Lord, your will be done. And we must say it every day. And let's pray and let's let things manifest in the Spirit what the Holy Spirit has put in us to pray and release.
Let's not spend so much time on our personal lives. I know that we want to do that. I know that we do. But I have to ask myself, am I truly dead to myself and my if I'm constantly offering up what I need and not taking into account what the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost need me to pray into the earth. For we have been so consumed with the things of this world, the things of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eye, and all of these things come in and they choke the Word of God out of our spirit. Let us be the body of believers that seek first the kingdom of heaven and then all, all these things that we need, these little things that mean nothing, all of these things will just follow after us. They'll all be given to us. Jesus told us, if you seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. Either it's truth or it's not, guys. And if we believe the Bible, then we don't have to warfare for our bills to be paid. We don't have to warfare for increase to come. We don't have to warfare for that new job promotion. Because if I'm truly seeking God first and His kingdom, and I'm really about His will, not mine, then things will be added to me that I didn't even ask for. Not only do I believe this because it's in the Word of God, so that's the ultimate authority, so you don't even need my testimony, but just to give you a testimony, I've seen this happen time after time after time, and I don't pray for things. I've told y'all that. Things follow me. I don't have a choice. They come after me. They follow me. They jump into my life. People bringing things. People giving things. Things supernaturally happening. All kinds of testimonies. And never did I ask for it one time. Whew. I feel the glory all over this. And I know we need to go. We've done our hour of prayer. I feel the glory all over this right now. Because that's really making it about my will and not his will. This is why we need the mystery of the fullness of Christ in us. We need to understand our inheritance in him. It is much higher than the things of this earth. It is far above the things of this earth. It is more to be desired than rubies. More to be desired than gold. This wisdom of the Lord and communion and union with Him that we will have for eternity. This is a mystery. And we're going to keep, we're going to continue on this. And we're going to eat this word. We're going to keep unraveling layers and layers of this word in scripture and it's going to change our lives we are going to get this foundationally we are going to understand the power that we have in Christ we're going to talk about it and we're going to get it by revelation we're going to keep going so that was Ephesians 1 we did all of Ephesians 1 And I've been in Ephesians all week. If you guys want to keep reading in Ephesians, I'm just putting Ephesians on repeat and I'm just listening to it. And I'm getting this. The fullness of Him. We are the fullness of Him. That's why we must manifest the kingdom of God in this earth. Not our kingdom, not our will, but the kingdom of Him. To him to, that knows to do right and doesn't do it, 
to him it is sin. We know that God wants us to release his kingdom in the earth. So let's do it. We're doing it. Amen. Woo! I hope this word bless you guys today. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this session. I thank you for ministering the word of God and causing me, Lord, to speak the things that you wanted people to hear. For the ones that were on this session, the ones that needed to hear it, Lord, I thank you that you caused them to hear what they needed today. Lord, I ask that this word, Lord, would go into their spirit and be seated into their spirit right now by your Holy Spirit and seal it, Father. And I ask, Lord, that the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and the lust of the eyes, Lord, would not try to come in and choke this word from them throughout this week. Lord, I pray that they would come back to this word and be quickened, Father, of the authority of who they are in Christ. Lord, that they would yield to you that they would submit to you and be your ambassadors in the earth. Father, I thank you. Let the faith of God arise in them. Let the peace of God arise in them. And let the joy of being in you and in Christ and one with you and being your child, Lord, so overflow them and cause them to drink from it, Father, every day and every minute. That the joy of their salvation, Lord, would be the, the most amazing thing every day that they think about. That they have eternal life in Christ. Lord, I pray, Father, for the enemy has tried to use things and offer things to them to make them feel lesser than or lower than or or below and even using things in the church and in the spirit father of even people preaching things to making them feel like they are lower and they haven't had you know a great encounter like them or they haven't been visited by angels or all of these things of comparison and competition lord in the body of christ lord i just pray that none of that will affect them ever again father if they've been affected by that i just pray right now lord god right now that the eternal life and the enjoyment of fellowship with you Lord, would be such a wonderful, great revelation, such a joy, Lord, that we have been saved from death and we've passed over into life. Lord, I pray that this would be greater than anything else and that no longer will you compare yourselves to others. For God says there's no respecter of persons. And I thank you, Father, that each one is so special to you. Each one you have pleasure in. And if they were the only ones that you sent Jesus for, you would have done it for just them. Lord, I thank you for this word. Seal it by your precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, share this if you get a chance. Go to contagiousloveintl.com for more info. And if you guys could give a one-time gift or if you feel like you want a monthly partner with our ministry and bless us and continue taking Awaken the Heart sessions to local churches. So we're taking Awaken the Heart to local churches uh, all across America and this summer we'll be traveling a lot. If you guys could help us for our summer mission tour, that would be amazing. Even one time is wonderful. Any amount, of course, is wonderful and will help towards that goal. Um, you can give contagiouslove.intl.com and that would be wonderful. I also created a birthday fundraiser on my profile. You can go down and give to that. And that goes to our summer mission trip tour for Traveling America and Taking Awaken the Heart around to many. So if you want to give to that, it's on my profile. You can just scroll down. You can see it there. And please share this, guys. If you didn't share this and this word blessed you today, please take a minute. Hit that share button. Share it with people on your wall. Or tag friends in the comments and let them see this today if that will encourage them. Thank you guys so much for joining. I see all of your comments. I will go back and read the ones that I missed. But I've been reading your comments during the session. I always do. I just don't reply because I'm talking and teaching. But I see them. I read them. And they encourage me. So thank you for commenting. Please always feel free to comment. I love reading them. And we will be in Kansas, Winfield, Kansas, May 31st through June 2nd for my birthday. May 31st is my birthday. 
We will be there, and I know the Lord is doing some powerful things. Some of you are coming and driving from far away or flying to come to these meetings, and we're feeling the stir in the Spirit. Something's going to take place here. I believe it's going to be so powerful and life-changing, drawing us into the fullness of who we already are in Christ. And we're going to get it. We're going to get this revelation of the knowledge of the Son of God. We're going to receive it, learn it, eat it. And thank you guys. Happy birthday to me. I'm 29. I'm just kidding. And a few. <laughs> so share this, guys. And um, let's see what else we've got. Friday, every second Friday of the month is Friday Night Fire. Come out to Huntsville, Alabama for Friday Night Fire every second Friday of the month through 2019. These meetings have been so good. If you can get out there, get out there. Uh, bring people from all around. And I think that's it for right now. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you about things in July when we get closer to that. Okay, I love you so much. It's been great. Bless you. And I'll see you next time. Remember? It's time to awaken the church, and it's time to awaken the heart. I love you. Bye.